So these two conditionings, which actually are on the brain, these two conditions freeze the heart and also make the domain of heart as zero and then the brain starts asserting itself. That is how we do not know how to be kind to others, how to be nice, how to be helpful, how to be gentle and how to be reassuring, protecting others. All this we have inherited already. We have already got a stone heart when we come to Sahaja Yoga and we have a brain either full of ego or super ego. So now with your Kundalini rising, you can clear out your head first of all. So the sincerity will come when the Kundalini will move and touch your Brahmarandra, which is the seat of your heart and will expand. Then the heart just comes back like a king, returns back and start dominating the brain. When the heart comes back, immediately find those people with whom we were angry, we would not talk, we had nothing to do, suddenly you become friendly with them. There's no problem. In many ways, people have harmed you. All that harming and everything just disappears. And you start becoming so nice and beautiful. What has happened that Kundalini has touched your Brahmarandra? Where is the seat of heart? And as soon as that opens out, your heart also opens and it gets awakened, it thinks, Oh, what? I have allowed this brain to rule me, how dare it rules me? It just jumps on it. And we have seen people, suddenly there is so much transform that is remarkable. The one gentleman in America, he said that, Mother, after realization I was so much changed that I become a very mild person. And I never used to wish my uncle or anyone. So he met him in some sort of a fate and then he said, Hello, uncle. The uncle started looking at him. Are you all right? He would never say that. Then he went and saw, Are you all right, uncle? Are you keeping all right? Can I do something for you? Very nice things he said. Uncle said, What have you been doing? Are you drunk or what? How can you speak so sweetly to me? I can't believe it. That's what happens. And that's why we have to understand that all these things can be easily dropped out because we have acquired them. They can be finished off because we have acquired them. They need not be all our lives, our uh, relations. So, ego and super ego. Both can be blasted off once your heart is awakened. So when we are dealing with people, we have to break the ice also by communicating with others in a very decent manner, like telling yourself, no, I don't believe that this man is so bad, let me look after him, he may be all right. He said, I don't think he's so bad. So to accept somebody is bad is very easy for human beings and once they start accepting such a thing, then they build up a kind of a fortress in which they live and they think they are the best people and nobody else are good. And thus the whole community, the whole society, the whole humanity gets bitten by these ideas. And Sahaja Yoga is the only way which is going to cure it. Sahaja Yoga is the only way which is going to finish this. And that part is to be prayed by you people to understand that sincerity can only come if you raise your Kundalini again and again and open your Brahmarat. Then your heart will rise. It will become a very awakened personality and it will take charge of your brain. 
which is all the time thinking, thinking, thinking like mad. And once that happens, then you will realize that now you have jumped into doubtless awareness. So the relationship between the two has to be fully understood. At first the domination of the heart, or the, we can say the kinghood of heart is challenged, is put down, brought to zero, and then this brain becomes the king and it starts ruling us. I think, I feel, means the brain, the ego. If you could give up, I think, I want, everything will be all right. You should say, I want is not the point, this body wants it. You separate yourself. Gradually you start separating yourself from all such situations by never saying, I want, you should say, this body, this hand, this head, you start separating. And once you are separated, all these barriers of ego and superego will disappear. But as it is, also it's very easy to get rid of these two. It's very easy to get rid of these two. Only by raising your Kundalini and breaking your Brahmarata. This is the greatest achievement that you have got, that you can break your Brahmarandra, make your Kundalini uh, get connected with the all-pervading power. That's why I always say you must meditate and you must be in thoughtless awareness that it works out. Like uh, from the river Ganges, if you have to fetch the water, you must have proper pitchers which are deep enough to receive the water. But if you take a stone, what can you bring out of it? But the Ganges flows, it is what it is. It has its all capacities in it. It doesn't change because you people have taken stones. So now you have to understand that raise your Kundalini as many times as you can. Try to put attention to your Kundalini all the time. See where is the problem is, get it cleared out, absolutely cleared out. Find out where the problem is and raise your Kundalini many a times and see that you are flowing all right on your, on your fontanelle bone area so that your heart expands. It's a mechanical process in a way, you can say that. But even that you people don't do. If you had done that, your heart would have increased. And you yourself will say, Mother, my heart has become large like Isha. And then you see the miracle of the heart, how it emits vibrations by which you become such compassionate, such dynamic, beautiful people and so sincere to serve you. I would request you to open your heart today for this puja. You have been very jubilant and happy and must be your heart must have opened. Because I've seen Sahaja Yogis have a very large heart for me, but for themselves they don't have. They'll do everything for me, but nothing for themselves. They'll work morning till evening to decorate the hall, to do everything. They must have sent all these flowers to me from everywhere. But if I tell them, you meditate for yourself, that they will not do. Or you achieve this for yourself, that they will not do. This is the situation. So instead of wasting all your energy for decorating all these things, you should decorate yourself within yourself. With sincerity, with nice thoughts about yourself, that you are capable, absolutely capable people. And you can use your imagination, your intelligence, rationality, whatever you think you have, to find the way, to find the way, again I say, to keep your heart large. And this is the message for today's birthday all over the world because I felt that the whole world was today like a big heart pulsating. I, I received the last phone and came here. From all over the phones coming, 
flowers are showering, a beautiful, nice thing they are saying, everything is there. When I am just drenched into it, just drenched, it was too much for me. Such sweet things for the children, from the children, such things from the ladies, some very, very nice from the men and it was amazing how these people are bubbling with enjoyment that today is my birthday. In the same way, please consider that every day is your birthday, that you have to raise your Kundalini all the time and keep the standard of your Kundalini higher and higher. The more you open out, the more threads of Kundalini will come up and the more your heart will open out and it will be awakened, it will become more powerful and with an open big heart and a powerful heart you can dominate your brain which is giving you all these funny ideas. I hope this will happen this year here and people will try to make it a point that we have a large heart. Large heart doesn't mean stupidity, doesn't mean that. Large heart means the heart in which you can put me in. It's quite a big person myself. So you have to have a very large heart that I could reside into your heart. That is the large heart. And that's what you all should have. If that happens, then everything will work out very well. So the surrendering part of it, you must know how to surrender and you must know how to keep whatever is not surrendered. Because you surrender yourself in such a manner that you expand your heart absolutely, put me down there and then keep your flowers with you to be given to me at a time when you are in complete control of yourself. So you have your emotions, your feelings like flowers, that you have to keep to yourself, which are the part of the same ocean of your heart. And once you are ready, everything is done, it's the whole house is ready, now bring the flowers, the emotions, the nice things, the beautiful things and nourish them. One must learn, I think there should be some books about how to say nice things to others. We should try to find some books like that or should write some books, how nice things could be said, how we can take care of others, how we can uh, make another feel our love, the expression of love. And that one, such a book will really help people to understand that this is nice to say. And once you say something nice to other, that niceness comes back, as I have told you, like the ripples that touch the shores come back and then you feel very happy. Go on saying things which are nice, which are pleasing, will be very much appreciated. But if you say it with sincerity, not just to tease someone or to say something, just to be so superficially good like thank you, thank you, thank you, but something from your heart as they say, then you will be surprised that the heart of the another person will open and from that heart will flow those beautiful flowers of emotion stores. So on one side you have to expand your heart and on the other side you have to reserve or preserve all the beautiful, nice, delicate feelings within yourself, absorb from everywhere and then to pour them out at the right point. That's the art. Like these flowers were in the garden, first to begin with, preserve, preserve. At the right time they were brought in, so they feel glorified that they are used at the right time. This is the way we have to weave ourselves in our heart because human beings are very delicate, very beautiful things and to beautify them you have to say beautiful things. 
This tongue is not for saying harsh things, for making fun of others, uh, for teasing others, but it's for saying something, such a beautiful thing, that the another person also imbibes that beauty. I've seen some nice things people have said, and that lingers in my mind. And I said, when will I have chance to say these things to others? So think about it, that now, you see, very nice sentence, huh? This was a very sweet thing they said, all right. So now, where should I use this? As I go to the shops, I see something, ah, that's good. That will be good for a particular person, let's buy that. In the same way, if you find these nice feelings and nice emotions and nice things said, then what do you do? You collect them, all these things, give them and use them at the right time, at the right place. This is what is the wisdom of Sri Ganesha. Innocent people are the most sincere people, innocent people. Those who are clever and cunning cannot be sincere because they enjoy their cunningness, they enjoy their uh, so-called brilliance, they can never be. Those people who are simple, who are loving, who care for love more than anything else, can only say very nice things sincerely. Today, I want to say many things to you, how I feel about this birthday in Australia, but I told you the words feel. Because well, see, Australia is such a far-off country. To come here with so many people sitting and singing Agatha Swagata, it is unbelievable, unbelievable. Because I have not given you any money, you have not given me any money, you are not bound to say anything like that. But not only that you are doing it, but you are enjoying it. It's something great, you are enjoying it and that's what it is that when your heart is large, then whatever you do for others you enjoy. You enjoy doing good things, you enjoy saying nice things. So we should have choices flowers of beautiful sayings, we should have choicest emotions which we should be able to express to each other. Now start on that, from today I have to say, you start on this, that from 1990 we are all the time going to speak something beautiful to each other all the time and just keep your ears open, keep your eyes open and wherever you get a chance, wherever you hear something like that, keep it in your mind and use it back. Today I'm so enamored and it is too much for me really to believe even that there are so many Sahaja Yogis in Australia which is so far away. So try to develop your sincerity, raise your Kundalini as many times as you can, keep it there, keep it on Sahasrana and see that your heart opens, that's the best way. They've been all asking me how to open our heart, I said, take the key, no, I don't know how to tell them. Open your heart means just raise your Kundalini, keep to the Brahmarandra and see that the Brahmarandra opens.